Good evening and salutations, my b, &B fans. You know, first of all, watching this episode, this is why I always say sometimes that this show needs to be an hour long. Because I feel like there's so much missing in this episode where you, it's like... It's like when the show starts to get good, then it just ends. And it's like... In some ways, you almost felt like when you're watching, you're just like, "What? What? Wait, what did I just watch?" <laughs> like you have to re, you have to sit there and watch it again. I, I just, <sighs> the actress that played Sheila has been on there for thirty something years. So I'm wondering when they're actually going to do like some sort of tribute episode, some sort of special episode for that. I feel like she deserves it. I feel like the actress deserves it. Um. I don't know what's going on with Douglas. Um, I feel like in a way that the adults around him, like when I watched it yesterday and Douglas is like, you know, I, I need to be my real family. And I'm like, you're a real family. What? So, so what is Beth and, 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 <laughs> and, and Liam, your fake family? I feel like a lot of that talk is coming from Thomas it's coming from Steffi. I don't feel like it's coming from Taylor, but I definitely do feel like Steffi and Thomas is influencing Douglas. Because why would a kid that's like maybe eight, seven years old talk about my real family? You know? And I get the whole dad thing, oh, he's my real dad as opposed to you being just some dude. But... When you start talking about real family, that's stuff that I've heard so much from Steffi. Now, of course, um, I guess yesterday, Douglas really wants to sit there and see his parents, so Liam took him there. Liam is at the door, and he sees Hope modeling for Thomas, and Thomas is doing his little quote-unquote handsy thing. And it just the look in his face, it was like, I'm sorry, what? So he goes in there, and Douglas is talking about, oh, you know, I love you guys. I love, you know, being with you. Because at first, Liam, in a lot of ways, he, he did kind of set it. He did set himself up to look like the bad guy. Because he was like, oh, well, you know, me and Hope miss you. And, you know, we really want you to come back home. And... You know, don't you agree, Hope? And I'm like, why would you do that for her? Why are you sitting there trying to put her in the middle? You know she's trying to keep the peace, and you're just going to sit there and say things like, right? Don't you want to come home, Hope? So Hope backs him to some extent, but Hope realizes that Douglas doesn't want to leave. He wants to spend time with his family. I mean, I mean, he wants to spend time with his dad. <laughs> say his family sound just as bad as Steffi at this point, but, you know, he did say something along the lines of, you know, I haven't really spent a lot of time with my dad, and I really want to do that, and Hope was like, you know, because Hope wants to do his best for Douglas. If, if Douglas is happy um, staying there and spending time with his dad, then she's going to let that happen. And that's what she did. She was like, okay, fine, and you can tell the disappointment in Liam. Especially when Douglas like, oh, well, how about we just have like a, a little sleepover weekend and Beth can come over and, you know, you can come by. And of course, it's leaving out Liam. And, you know, Hope was like, well, you know, we're kind of busy this week with, the, you know, the fashion line and stuff like that. But she didn't, she didn't say no to the possibility of Hope spending the weekend over there. So with that being said, it looked like, and I, I don't even want to sit down and laugh because it's not even funny. It looked like he, he was about to be in tears because when he comes back to talk to Hope and when he comes back to talk to Brooke, Brooke, um, yeah, Brooke, what they call him, Brooklyn. This is what happens if you watch all four shows. Um, when he comes back, he's like, you know, I'm bringing this stuff up. And every time I do that, every time I say something, I look like the bad guy. I look like the villain. I feel like I'm being shut out at this point. And it's, it's crazy because, you know, 
they're bonding so much over the fact that Brooke just lost her husband to the Foresters, to Steffi and Thomas, and then Taylor, right? Well, Steffi and, yeah, Steffi and Thomas and Taylor, you know, she felt like that, that drove a wedge between them. And now, when you look at it from Liam's point of view, you got Thomas that takes Douglas, you know, to the, you know, to, to their place. And now he's spending all that time over there. And any time that Hope wants to see him, she has to go over there to do that. She has to go over there to sit there and see, um, see him. They're spending a lot of time at work. She spends a lot of time over there. And he's just, he ain't feeling it. Okay. He's not feeling it. He feels that, um, Thomas is being very manipulative, manipulating, manipulating the situation. And I can understand, I, I can understand where Liam is coming from. I, I get it. Because this isn't just blind rage. This isn't just like petty jealousy. You know, this is stuff, this is events that's happening that's causing him to feel this way. And so it sucks. Um, Katie was over there talking with Brooke about Bill. And, you know, of course, you know, Katie was like, yeah, how long did it take Bill to show up at your doorstep? And, you know, of course, Brooke was like, well, you know, he was only here to sit there and try to make sure I was okay. And, you know, I just want to be with Rich. I was like, you're, you're not, you're missing the point. The point is, is that Katie felt like, you know, Bill was going to do something like that. And that's literally what ended up happening. And of course, she talks about Deacon and his proposal, and she just wants to be with bro. I mean, she just wants to be with Ray. She wants her husband back, blah, 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 the usual stuff. And of course, Katie alludes to some mystery man, but, you know, she doesn't really have a lot to tell. So she's like, yo, listen, when I know, you know something. Um, more of a filler scene than anything else. And the last scene is between Sheila and Deacon. I'm just like, Deacon, what are you doing at this point? Like, bro, what are you doing? First of all, you start talking about Brooke, and you can clearly see that Sheila is getting jealous, right? So he's like, you know, listen, I'm just going to drop because you seem like you get a little kind of edgy whenever I sit there and talk about her. And, of course, you know... She was like, oh, you're not going to have a chance with her and this, that, and the third. I'm like, Deacon, what are you doing? Okay, what what are you doing? You have, I don't, I'm still trying to figure out how the writers actually said, you know what we should have Deacon do? We should have him propose to Brooke. Even though that she's still married, we should have him do that. Even though that Deacon is living with a psycho. He should do that, even though that him even alluding to the idea of wanting to be with Brooke is going to endanger her, is going to endanger Hope, is going to endanger anyone within that vicinity of that family. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's, a, it's a totally good scene. It should totally work. Yeah, we're we're, we're going to make that happen. I'm just like, if we just leave common sense out, you know, like, did we just close the door on common sense? It was like, this is how we're going to sit and start writing this. Because I felt like that's what they did. I felt like they just took common sense out of their head. Said, yeah, no, we don't need this. We're, we're, we're good. We got pen and pad. We're, we're, we're going to make this work. We're going to we're going to work it out. That's how I felt. The whole I'm I'm, just, I'm out working. I'm just like I still can't believe he actually proposed to Brooke. Like, what? It seems like such a crackheaded idea that I, I just, to this day, and I know there's only been a couple of days, but I'm still just like, bro, are you kidding me? And of course, when you start joking around and um, Sheila starts talking about, you know, Deacon is her whole world and, you know, he, she loves him or she's in love with him and, you know, then she... Okay, I don't... <laughs> Deacon likes being called daddy. He likes being called daddy. I think it's a little... I like being called poppy. But daddy, I just... I don't... I don't know. I, 
I don't know. Which is actually stupid when I'm thinking about that, because I'm like, well, I do like to be called Poppy sometimes, and that's technically daddy. Anyway, she starts getting more close to him, and then they start kissing, and I'm like, Deacon, again, what are you doing? This woman's getting jealous. He kissed him on her. She is alone, staring at the four walls besides watching her soaps. And you're over there proposing to Brooke. You know, the, 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 and, and the thing that's, that's, that's really blowing me is that seeing that scene of them kissing and everything like that, and then you know that he's going to try his shot again with Brooke. This isn't a one-time thing. He's going to do it again. And Sheila's already jealous. I'm just going to say, like, this is one of those things where it's like, you know, when people sit there and say that they love their family, this, that, and the third, I love my daughter, yada, yada, yada. And then you do things like that. You make crackheaded decisions like that. And it's just like, I thought sometimes I'm just like, it's amazing that they can somehow just write this stuff out and be like, yep, this makes sense. No, 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 no. This is, this is 18 minutes. This is going to fly right back. They're not even going to notice the uh, the level of crackheaded decisions that are, are made in this show with these characters. I think that's why sometimes I love actually talking about this show. Because... I mean, all the shows, they, they have a certain beat, right? They follow a certain beat, and that's cool. But sometimes with B&B, &B, it's like, they don't worry about things like common sense and logic and, you know, trying to make things make sense. Like, Deacon out of nowhere. By the way, Deacon hasn't really been messing with Brooke for a hot minute. Like, he just kind of just left that alone. The minute that she is, you know, single and heartbroken. It's like, oh, now it's my chance. Now it's like, come on, bro. And I honestly tell you, uh, even in general, even even if, like, she was ready to just kind of end her marriage, there's a certain level of tag, okay? Like, bro, y'all haven't even dated, and you came into what a rent, which I'm just like, where did you get the money for that rent? <laughs> like, did I buy it for you? Like, I mean, Sheila keeps promising, oh, I got money stashed away somewhere. I'm like, are you going to believe that? Like, is, did, is she is she helping him pay bills? Like, where's this proof at? You just going to sit there and keep dangling a carrot in his... Again, that's why I love talking about this show. Because as I'm talking... And I'm talking about this show, and I'm talking about the decisions that they're making. I'm just like, this makes no sense. <laughs> Half of the stuff that I've talked about just makes no sense when I'm talking about this show. I think that's the beauty of it. That, at least that's the beauty of it when I do these reviews. Because I'm just like... You know, with GH, I mean, they have their time, so I'm just like, okay, whatever. But at least they follow some sort of half of, of logic to some extent. Even with Y and R. I know a lot of people are like Y and R there's there's a path. That does make sense. With B and B it's just it's like, oh, okay, we're we're just we're just gonna abstract this whole thing. Okay, cool. Anyway, with that being said, I think that's pretty much about it. I can't really think of anything else to happen in this episode. So with that being said, I'm gonna go. I want to thank you for watching, be safe, and I'll see you in the next video.